Welcome to Jikoni Magic's Meza. Today I'll be sharing with you my eggless banana and chocolate chip muffins. It's such an easy recipe to whip up as in it's very hard to mess up. This is still part of my ongoing ovenless baking series. For a complete list of all the ingredients that I've used and the step-by-step -step guide, please head on to my website jikonimagic.com and you'll be sorted. Before we start working on the recipe, it's best to prepare your sufuria oven. So to a sufuria that's big enough to accommodate your cake tin, pour in your salt. A cup of salt will do. I normally use regular iodized cooking salt for these purposes. I don't buy any special salt. And place an old sufuria lid or a wire rack on top of it. And on top of that, go ahead and place another sufuria lid that has a smooth, flat surface. Like you can see here. And then take a tight fitting lid, cover your sufuria to create that oven like effect. And place the sufuria on your cooker on high heat for 15 minutes. And as the sufuria oven is warming up, let's go ahead and prepare our muffins. So, to my mixing bowl, I added a quarter cup of sunflower oil, followed by a half cup of tightly packed brown sugar. And I followed this up by adding one and a half cups of mashed bananas. Then next, I mixed everything in until the brown sugar dissolved into the bananas. So once all the sugar had dissolved, I added a teaspoon of vanilla essence, mixed it in, and then set everything aside. And in this bowl, I already have three quarter cups of self-raising flour and a quarter cup of whole wheat flour, to which I'm adding a mixture of a quarter teaspoon each of ginger, allspice, and cinnamon, a half teaspoon of baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And to that, I'm also adding a pinch of freshly grated nutmeg. Then I go ahead and mix all the dry ingredients using my fork before passing them through a sieve to ensure that they are evenly mixed and distributed throughout. And so once I finished sieving, I took my spatula and folded all the dry ingredients into the wet ones. So I did this until everything was just mixed in because I did not want to overwork the butter. But after mixing everything in, I noticed that the butter was too heavy for my liking. So I went ahead and added a tablespoon of fermented milk. You could also use yogurt here. And after adding the first tablespoon, I assessed the mixture to see how it had become. It had become loose, but not loose enough for my liking. So I added the second tablespoon of fermented milk. And then I went ahead and mixed it in. And as you can see, the butter really loosened up and I was satisfied with this consistency. It's important to note that if you find that your butter is too heavy, to add your yogurt or your milk or your water in bits. Add the first tablespoon, assess, decide if you like the consistency. If you do not like it, then go ahead and add more. But do not add all of it at once. So I was satisfied with this and then I set it aside and then went on to work on my chocolate. So I decided to use regular milk chocolate. You could also use semi-sweet chocolate chips. I didn't have them at the time and regular milk chocolate works just fine for me. This was 100 grams of milk chocolate, but I went ahead and measured it using a measuring cup for someone who'd want to know how many cups they are. So from this, I measured a half cup and um, an extra quarter cup or so. So I added all the chocolate pieces at once into the muffin butter and folded them in until they were just incorporated and I stopped. So the next step was to fill my muffin tins. There are many ways to do this. I use my ice cream scoop that measures one tablespoon and I scoop two of them into this size of muffin tins and this ensures that the mixture is up to two thirds full so that as the muffins start baking and rising they won't end up spilling out of the muffin tins and in case you're wondering no I do not oil these silicone muffin tins. I just go ahead and scoop the butter in there and once they are baked, unmolding is super simple. They just come right off. And sometimes when I'm feeling too lazy to start breaking up the chocolate, this is another method that I use to bake my banana and chocolate muffins. So I scoop a tablespoon of the butter, add it to my muffin tins, and then I break my chocolate bar along the predetermined lines i'm sure you've seen how they are normally marked when you buy them and then i place the boxes on top of the butter and then i go ahead and top everything off 
by adding another tablespoon or so of the muffin butter on top to cover the chocolate so let's head on to the sufuria oven this time i did something different i incorporated the use of an oven thermometer because some people had requested me to show them the exact temperature that the sufuria oven operates at when i bake because we're having difficulties as you can see it's at 200 degrees centigrade i'll show you what the temperature is when i finish baking because i normally use my phone to record the videos and it was a bit hard to give you a close-up at this time okay so by the time i finished placing the muffins in there the temperature had dropped to around 190 degrees centigrade so i covered reduced the heat to medium low and the temperature will end up maintaining at around 175 to 180 degrees centigrade if i set the flame on medium to low just somewhere there so i baked the muffins for around 40 minutes and this is what they looked like and the temperature of the thermometer was at around 180 degrees centigrade now this time i was able to show you the exact temperature so as you can see it had slightly dropped it was at around 170 degrees centigrade so meaning that the muffins baked at 180 degrees centigrade for 40 minutes which is the same temperature that you'd set your oven at if you wanted to bake inside the oven okay so let me just show you how well the muffins baked as you can see the toothpick that i inserted in the center came out clean and in the background when you look at the thermometer the temperatures were rapidly dropping at this point the temperature was at around 150 degrees centigrade this is because the sufria oven doesn't have a thermostat to keep the temperature regulated at a constant level and now to demonstrate how well the muffins baked by opening them up to show you how the crumb looked like and how moist they are plus how the chocolate chips looked inside there so this is how the muffins looked like so if you ask me it's quite impressive how they turned out so this goes to demonstrate that having no oven should not hold you back i hope that i've encouraged somebody who has always wanted to bake but has no oven to go ahead and enjoy all the baked goodies that they'd love to experience so i hope that you're going to give this recipe a try please do give it a thumbs up if you've liked it leave your feedback in the comment section down below and until next time please keep it jikoni magic goodbye